Hey guys, this is Vincent with Vasco Toys. And on today's episode of Action Vasco, I'm going to show you this airplane cargo hold diorama that I created for D Amazing. Can't wait to show you guys this piece. Vasco Toys. Action figure dioramas and props. So here is the airplane cargo hold made in 112 scale as I mentioned and let's start out with the dimensions. So from this is actually two different diorama pieces. There's a, a left piece and a right piece that are mirror images of each other essentially that can be put together in several different combinations to make a bunch of different setups to add some versatility for the piece. So when it's fully combined in this in this particular layout, it is 26 inches across, 16 inches high, and it is 13 inches deep. That's without these two pieces on the front. Those are six inches, so it'd be about 19 inches deep when you have these two removable platforms on the front. So those are the dimensions. Now we'll get into the specific details of the diorama and how I made it. I mentioned that these are removable, so these are two different ramp pieces that you could have for someone who is, you know, coming onto the airplane, loading the airplane with cargo. So these are not magnetized to the piece. They are actually just um, a couple of 3D printed parts that are ramp pieces glued together, balsa wood on the bottom, sewing mesh, and then uh, some other 3D printed parts on the top. So those are. Um, definitely some good accessory pieces that I think finish off the look for the full dial, but they do come off if you need them to come off. So we'll move them out of the way just for a minute. Then I want to show you guys, so they're, they're both, uh, it's fully magnetized. So each piece has a base piece, a back wall piece, side wall piece, and then a removable roof as well. And they're, they can stand alone if you want them to, or you can put them in a bunch of different combinations, which I'm going to show you guys. But the cool thing about this is all of the magnets are hidden. So I've lined this diorama. It's made from XPS foam to start the structure. But then I've lined the diorama with um, different things like styrene sheeting, uh, some chipboard that was Mod Podged and painted, some 3D printed parts, and a couple of other things just to give it this look, which is supposed to be more of a solid metallic kind of a finish. Now I want to run through several of the layouts with you guys just so you can see what I was trying to do when I was planning out this diorama. And actually for this diorama, the way that I did plan this was actually in a program called Tinkercad. Normally I'll do a hand-drawn sketch to plan out a diorama, but this time I decided that I was going to use Tinkercad to make sure that I was designing the 3D printed parts just to make it easier on myself to make sure they would fit where I wanted them to. And so I started out with that, and uh, at first uh, we were just going to do one section of the airplane cargo hold for, for D Amazing. And then he and I talked a little bit, and just having seen his videos, we kind of talked through maybe opening that up to being um, a larger piece. Because whenever you see a D Amazing video, he always has really great um, horizontal view on his videos. So I didn't think he would get what he needed out of doing just this one side. So we expanded it to the two. So this is the main vision that I had for the diorama when I was creating it. And then I thought, well, maybe we can add some versatility. And he and I talked about doing that. So uh, if you move these ramps out of the way, then you can get the second layout, which is essentially a longer corridor of one side of the cargo hold. So what I'm going to do is just shift some of these around. So you can have it like this. And then you can take one side off. And if you line everything up, 
you can have a longer view of a hallway, like a corridor type of scenario. Taking a look at the floor, I want to just give you guys an idea of the components that I use for this. We already talked about the ramps, so I'm not going to go into those again in this part. But basically, so for the main part of the floor, I wanted to use styrene. So I just used styrene sheets that I bought at Hobby Lobby, and I cut them into four segments per, uh, per floor piece. So four on this side, four on this side. And the reason I wanted to do styrene is because I wanted it to have this like glossy, almost metallic look without having to spray paint the floor because um, I just didn't want any risk of figures sticking to the paint. And since this, is, this was already white, it worked out really well just to use the styrene. And this is actually the only part of the diorama I used styrene on. I had originally planned to do styrene on a lot more of it, but this worked out uh, much better to do it this way. So it started with styrene sheeting just glued directly onto the pink insulation foam using uh, hot wire foam factory styro goo. So I did that first. Then I, when I was looking at the uh, imagery that the amazing and I were going over for the inspiration for this piece, uh, I noticed that there was some, there were a lot of different components on the floor for airplane cargo holds, and I've never been in one myself, so I was relying on, you know, Google images and things like that. And I noticed there were several different types of mechanisms to allow the uh, cargo or luggage to move around the area um, where everything's being stored. And one of those was like a rail mechanism where you had these metal rails with um, sort of um, like a conveyor belt type feel. So I decided to go with that for this piece. And that's what these are supposed to represent. And these don't move or anything. They're 3D printed parts that I designed real quick in Tinkercad. And then um, there were also these a lot of different paneling and things like that. So I decided to do these black panels printed with PLA foam just like the rails are. And um, there were really, you could do a lot of different paneling. But I wanted to make sure that we didn't have too much uh, different levels on the floor. Because I know he's going to be posing figures on these. And I didn't want it to be like a nightmare for him to get the figures to actually stand up. So these are elevated a little bit, and so are these from the styrene. But there are a lot of areas where he doesn't have to worry about, you know, placing the, the figures, um, you know, too carefully where they're not going to stand up. So that's kind of what I was thinking on the floor piece, just to make sure that we had something that represented, you know, the cargo hold, but at the same time lended itself well to action figure photography, action figure reviews, and all those kinds of things. Let's talk about what I think is probably the most critical component to selling the cargo hold feel, uh, which is the, the sidewall for this piece. And for this, I really wanted to m simulate sort of the uh, curvature of an aircraft. And uh, what I was seeing in the inspiration images was that that was happening in the cargo hold. So I figured we needed to m reflect that in the design of the diorama, which was somewhat difficult to accomplish. Um, I definitely knew that I didn't want to try to do it with foam because I wanted this to be really precise and I thought if I tried cutting uh, arches, so to speak, with the foam that maybe it wouldn't be as precise as it needed to be. So I decided to 3D print these little, and you can see them right here on the edging, these little uh, what I called like uh, PLA ribs that I put, so there's three sets of them. There's one right here, one here, and one here. Basically, similar to where you're seeing the, the rivets that we created. And that was the first step. And by the way, I have a video of how I did this on my Instagram Reels if you wanna check that out. So I put those down first, um, and then I took a chipboard, and I glued it on um, just matching the curvature to the, uh, to the 3D printed parts and let that dry. Then I, to try to sturdy this up a bit, I used Mod Podge and I applied it throughout the piece. That really hardened it up so you can hear there's a little bit of a, 
harder feel than what you might have on regular chipboard because of that. And I think it also made it look a little bit more like, uh, you know, metallic panels, metal panels, that kind of thing. And uh, it, it worked out well and it held up well for me. And once the Mod Podge dried, then I went ahead and spray painted this whole thing white. After that was done, I designed these little, I don't even know what these are supposed to be, just some sort of paneling that I saw in my inspiration. And I put those onto metallic tape, which I glued in place. Even though this was tape, I also had to glue it just to make sure that it would be permanent. And I put that in place. And then I did the same thing with the rivets that you see. So I actually had these, I think they're dollar store or dollar general beads. They're like half pearls that are kind of like bedazzled jewels. I found them and I cut the tape into these strips and then I glued the beads onto the tape, spray painted that and then glued the tape on to get this effect. So I'm really happy with the way this came out. This was the most challenging part of this diorama and I think if it didn't come out well, it would have uh, really you know, put the quality of this down. So I'm really proud of the way this came out. And then on the back here, I uh, basically, this is the same process that I did here, except there's no curvature. And it's the chipboard. It was glued on to the foam directly. And then I used the Mod Podge and I spray painted it this gray. And I wanted to have several different colors so that it wouldn't be boring. At first I thought about doing it white and then I thought a, a darker back wall could be cool. And then this part here is actually uh, some of that styrene sheeting. So I, I'm, I was wrong before when I said I didn't use it anywhere else. I did use it here. Now I wanna show you guys the ceiling portion of this. So th this is all magnetized. I think I mentioned that before, but just to show you guys. So this, it, it locks in there really well. And there's a couple of things that I did to try to help uh, make sure that everything sits where it needs to. So these rails were actually originally designed to be used on the floor before I decided to go with the other rail design. And then I had them left over and I thought, well, maybe I can use them on the ceiling. So it serves to block uh, some of the unsightly parts of the uh, the walls, basically these areas here where I didn't cover the, the um, 3D printed um, ribs that I mentioned. So if you if you put the, the ceiling on, it really blocks that well. It makes it look like a cohesive piece where the rivets feed into these this metal cross beam that goes up there. So that's why I did that. Then I had these other 3D printed vents that I designed and I put them on the the line work of the chipboard. So this is chipboard. This I did not actually put Mod Podge on uh, and I think it looked really good just with the spray paint. So these are supposed to all just be metal panels and to try to sell that a little bit more, I put sewing needles staggered. So I did one on this side, this side, so on. And, and alternated across all of the different beams that you see. And I think just having the different size metal panels looks kind of cool and interesting. So that's why I decided to do it that way. And then these pieces in the middle are just supposed to be some sort of like venting. There's some little, little venting on the side. I don't know how well you guys can see it uh, of each one of those pieces. And uh, I think that you know, overall, the whole look of this is something that I'm really proud of. I love the colors. I love um, the sewing needles, all that kind of stuff. Here's a quick ACBA shot I put together with some of my Dragon Ball Z SH Figure Arts figures. I actually put this together before the diorama was finished, but I wanted to put Bardock in with Frieza, Zarbon, and Dodoria, and here's the behind the scenes for it. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and thanks for checking out this action figure diorama that I created for D-Amazing. I really can't wait to see what he does with the dio, and I hope that you guys will leave me comments letting you know what you think of it as well. If you love action figures or action figure dioramas and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do, and we'll see you in the next episode.